So our next section in thinking about the econometrics of how we look at asset pricing models and the data are the classic linear regression tests. Basic idea is we think about the model in expected return beta language. So as a reminder, first step, run returns on a factor in order to figure out the betas. And then the point of the model is expected return should be high where the betas are high. I wrote the alphas. Usually we write them here. I put them there to emphasize that the alphas are errors of the model. So the point of the model is that expected returns should be related to betas. There should be a, uh, a line there with slope lambda. And the alpha is the way the model is wrong, the deviation from the model's prediction of expected returns. That's the statement of the model. Our task is, econometric task is estimate. How do we find best guesses in the data of the free parameters of the model? Standard errors, how do we cal characterize the sampling uncertainty of those uh, best estimates? And test, the model's central prediction is the alphas should be zero. So the central test is some measure of are the alphas altogether too big. It'll always be in that form, a quadratic form, some sort of sum of squares of the alphas. Is that bigger than would be the case if the true alphas were zero, but we just got unlucky in this sample? That's a statistician's notion of the word test. When we take asset pricing models to data, we do all sorts of other stuff which I'm going to call evaluate and diagnose the models. We ask questions like, is the, the SML, the security market line, too flat? Often, this comes out too flat. That's an interesting puzzle for asset pricing models. We often ask, well, are these betas, how do they do relative to characteristics? Do the small firms d d uh, get their return because they're small or because their betas are right? Can the betas, in, in a general regression, expect the returns on betas and characteristics? Can the betas drive out the characteristics or not? Do idiosyncratic variances or, or nonlinear terms in beta, do they matter? Are the market prices of risk reasonable in some sense or another? Are they too big? How does one model do relative to another? These are all informally, we use the word test to talk about this stuff, but they're not really tests. Statisticians mean by the word test, is this model taken literally true or not, rejected or not, period. That's the alpha test. All these other interesting diagnostics are things we do and things we'll look at sampling errors about, but they're not strictly speaking tests. Now, why are we doing linear regression tests? We just did a whole week of GMM. Why do we need something new? Well, partly this is history. Historically, the models were expressed first in expected return versus beta uh, 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 language, which is why we're going to think about them in expected return versus beta language. And before GMN was invented, there was a, a whole econometric theory based on the usual IID normal kinds of assumptions that we use to do uh, the econometrics of, of regression. Now we've moved on. Now, now we understand discount factors. Now we understand GMM. We don't have to do IID normals. More importantly, now we have computers. And, and we can just do bootstraps in Monte Carlos if we want sampling errors. Uh, but that is where these, these have their roots in a deeper history. And if you're looking for a why do we do things this way, really it's, it's historical as opposed to uh, right now being the most obvious things to do. The bottom line, we're going to look at a bunch of different methods. Time series regression, cross-section regression, Fama Macbeth, and the SDF GMM approach. And what we'll find out is that all of the methods are pretty much the same. However, they don't look the same. And our, our goal will be to understand how each of them works and then how they relate to each other and how they are basically the same thing when you're done. Um.